Hi to everyone, especially again to, to, the, to the year 11s. We are really thinking of you, praying for you as you do tests and exams and assessments in, in the run into these last few weeks. Um, we're praying for God's blessing on you. Uh, so here we are, week five of this extraordinary story um, of this journey through the wilderness towards the promised land. The children of Israel, the people of God, you know the story by now, were slaves in Egypt. And God delivered them through Moses, uh, who led them out and Pharaoh's armies chased them across to that Red Sea. And Moses lifted up his rod, didn't he? And that, and, and God came down that night and the Red Sea, like our psalm says, ran and fled from God's presence and a pathway opened up for the people. And when they got to the other side and their enemies had died, the people cried out, who is like you, O Lord among the gods? And then they went out into that wilderness. They were being led by, uh, by God through that fiery pillar at night. And they had that wonderful cloud giving them shade from the sun in the day and then they ended up in this place Mara which was bitter where the water was bitter and they were thirsty and the people complained do you remember but Moses prayed and we remembered that we too in our troubles have a choice we can complain or we can pray um, and then Moses prays and throws that tree in and the bitter waters turn sweet and they're able to drink and then they complain again, the people, because they're running out of food. And God provides this amazing food, um, this manna from heaven, which arrives on the ground in the morning. And they collect it up. And for 40 years, like Monica told us, that manna was provided by God. Hundreds of thousands of people were fed. Moses says, this is the bread that God has given you from heaven. In another place in the Bible, it says it's the food of angels. It's a very special food. And then on they go into that wilderness, do you remember? And they end up at Mount Horeb, which was the area of the desert where Moses, perhaps many months before, maybe it was a year or so before, had seen that burning bush and God had said to him, you're going to go to Egypt, you're going to get the people and you're going to come back. So Moses knew that place. It was a desert. It was scorched. It was dry. The people started to complain again. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children out here and our animals? And it was a place of argument and contention where they found fault with God. And they could have prayed, couldn't they? But they chose not to pray. But somebody was praying. It was Moses. Some of the translations says he shouted out to the Lord. It says he cried out with fire in his heart. He prayed fervently to God. Oh God, we need water. And water poured out in a place where there should never have been water. There was water. How can water come from a rock? Well, it did. It poured out. We showed you that beautiful old picture of the people worshipping God and lifting up their hands as the water comes and Moses up in the corner having hit that rock with his staff. And then on they go. Every time that cloud moves, every time that pillar, pillar of fire moves, the people have to go with them. This is a fantastic bit on the map. We can see this now, how they're making their journey down, 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 down that peninsula, that Sinai Peninsula. Um, God led them right down towards the end of that. And they reached this mountain called the Mountain of God, Mount Sinai. It was at the back of the desert. Naturally speaking, it was a place of desolation. It was a wilderness. It was empty, but it was about to become for them a place of great and wonderful spiritual riches. And we might feel in our own lives that we're at the back of the desert, that we're in a dry and dusty place, but this is the very place where God can come and touch our hearts and reach us. And God calls Moses up the mountain. There's a sense in which he's calling us up the mountain. He's calling us to come up closer. And it reminded me this story of an old Pentecostal song, which they used to sing about a hundred years ago. I wasn't alive a hundred years ago, can I just point out? But they used to sing this song and it said it's got these wonderful words. It says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Canaan's table land, a higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. It's a cry from someone's heart saying, God, I want to go on with you. I want to get nearer to you. And then it says, my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. And then the chorus said, I'm pressing on 
the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as, I on, as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. That's what happened with Moses. His feet went up onto the higher ground. God is calling us up into a higher place with him, a closer place. And when they sang that song, apparently in the 1920s and 30s, in that Pentecostal outpouring, sometimes they sang it for hours and hours and hours in the meetings as the Holy Spirit was poured out. And the prayer of that song was, Lord, take me up onto the higher ground need to ask ourselves, are we pressing on? Are we praying, Lord, I want to go on up. I don't want to stay at the bottom of this mountain. I want to go up the mountain. So various things happened at the edge of Mount Sinai, including sacrifices to God and some of the elders and leaders were allowed to see a glimpse of God. And then God calls Moses up onto the mountain alone. And for six days, he waits on the mountain. And then on the seventh day, God says, come up higher, come up to where I am. And as he finally ascends and goes up into that last part, a cloud comes down over the mountain as God himself descends and a great earthquake shakes the earth. That's what the psalm said. The mountains skipped like goats, the hills jumped around like lambs. That's what it felt like. Why did it happen? It happened because God had come down. Just like our psalm says, when we get to Psalm, when we get to verse 7 of Psalm 114, it says, Tremble or shake earth at the Lord's coming, at the presence of the God of Jacob. God had come down himself upon the earth onto Mount Sinai. And the people at the bottom of the mountain could see some of this in the distance, and they started to cry out in terror as the earth is shaking under their feet. And they watch astonished as the top of the mountain begins to light up with flames. And God descends with this blazing fire and darkness swirled across the top of the mountain and a storm broke out. There were flashes of lightning and a great trumpet sound was heard and a mighty thundering voice. And the people cry out, God, don't speak to us. We don't want to hear your voice. They're terrified by what they're seeing. And what did Moses do? He goes on up into that mountain. Did he hide his face? We don't really know. The Bible says that even Moses was exceedingly afraid and trembled greatly. That's what Hebrews said. But we know that Moses remained on that mountaintop with God for 40 days. What happened up there? We don't really know. But what we do know is that when he returned down the mountain, he was carrying with him some extraordinary tablets of stone on which God himself had written. The very words of God written by the very hand of God. These were the Ten Commandments. In the light of this extraordinary story, Hebrews tells us, let's be thankful and worship God in a way that will please him with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Wow. Let's pray. God, we want to worship you with reverence um, and with godly fear. You are this great God of Moses, the God of the people of Israel. You are this great God who came down upon Mount Sinai, Sinai with the fire and the storm and the lightning and the trumpet and the mighty voice. Lord, we we worship you and honour you as this great and consuming fire. And yet, Lord, we know you're calling us up, you're calling us on, and we want to go like like Moses did up that mountain. Would you help us, Lord? Would you help us to press on, Lord? Amen. Amen. Okay, I've got three quick quiz questions here. The first one is, what was the mountain called that Moses went up and where God came down? How many days, this is tricky, did Moses have to wait for God to call him up the top? We know he was on that mountain for 40, he went up for 40 days, but he had to wait before that for how many days? And what was he carrying on the way back down that he didn't take up with him? So the mountain was called Mount Sinai. He had to wait for six days on that mountain and then God called him up on the seventh day and he was carrying 
extraordinary tablets of stone on which God himself had written words on the way back down. I hope that you got them all right.